Very quickly, the question surrounding the series became, would I survive the playoff loss, the Super Bowl loss? It very quickly went from that to, will this series survive in general? The contract resigning for Chase Dawson has crippled this team in terms of funds, and if we do not make over $62 million in this next year, I am going to uh, be done for. So expect me to clear cap penalties pretty much every week to try and make up some of the funds. Although, someone was saying, worst case scenario, go to user management, and I guess I could retire from the team and then try to be the head coach or something like that. We'll see. Hopefully it's just not a money issue by the end of it. That would be nice. This team is set up, this team is good to go for this next season. I'm obviously intrigued to see what we'll be able to do because it is still a very talented squad. We took a hit on the O-line on the right-hand side, but Yoder's still solid and that O-line is still more than likely the best O-line in football. You have, again, Baldwin at tight end. Wide receiver-wise, I mean, there is Nikhil Harry. Of course, we still have Crosby who might be able to develop and then Pemberton who we drafted. Dawson's still there. Spencer and Whitfield is a solid one-two punch, even if they're not the highest overalls, and a new fullback in Fredrickson. And then defensively, it's still Game Changer Central. I mean, you now look at Godfrey. We have actually Monroe, who I want to put above Ivy, because we've moved Monroe back to corner after picking up a win in the draft. He'll be a safety alongside Reggie Choice. Linebacker-wise, it's looking good, although we are running a 3-4 this year. Very tempted, and actually might, even though he's not as good. But Wakefield next to Miles Jack just to get him that playtime. It's a very good team. It is. It's a very good team. Oh, and I signed this kicker named Homan. He doesn't have a very good dev pattern, but he was better than who we ended up drafting. This team should make the playoffs again, no problem. This team, especially when you factor in the changes that we made to the XP sliders, should develop quite well this year. We should be right back in contention. We should be right back to the Super Bowl, and we can hopefully get some revenge for the worst showing I think I've ever seen. So, again, we're going to handle this regular season much like we did last year. I'm not really going to jump into games. We'll save that for the playoffs. So, and I signed Desmond Trufant as a depth, uh, depth corner because he still has an X-Factor, so I figured why not. But we're going to handle this the same way. We're going to look to make as much progress as we possibly can and get back to the playoffs as soon as possible too because that's what it's all about you know the only way i would say the you know really at any point would the regular season be interesting is if we are struggling more than we should and that money total is not dropping soon enough solomon crosby will stay at a 76 but he'll be that much closer to being a scheme fit as his route running improved quite well indeed and actually with Solomon Crosby do I want him as the second wide out over Pemberton you know I'm gonna I'm gonna bump Crosby up over Pemberton I want to get Crosby at a little bit of extra time Pemberton's a younger guy he will have plenty of opportunities as money wise it is at 61 again <sighs> that backup option for giving up ownership but then becoming a coach that might be our only way <laughs> I just don't think we're going to make up the money total. And that sucks because I love this team and actually want to use this team and play with this team even once this series is over. I don't know if that's going to be a possibility. I think money-wise, we are so totally screwed. And it completely handcuffs our ability to re-sign anybody throughout the course of the season. Like, there's just nothing I can do on that front because we don't have the bonus money to give out. But this is what happens when you hand out what I would assume is the biggest contract that's ever been handed out to Chase Dawson. Again, it was, what, a $40 million hit, if I'm not mistaken? I mean, we still have $28 million in cap room. That's the crazy thing. It's just the bonus money absolutely killed it. I mean, yeah, he's... I mean, God help anybody, any other team in the league, if you're paying somebody else $40 million. <laughs> I don't think I've ever given out that crazy of a contract, but even trading that contract at this point wouldn't save us. So, here we go. A new season begins. We take on Kansas City in prime time. And we win. 35 to 20. Decent start. Weekly award-wise, Dawson has a phenomenal game. Four touchdowns, 24 of 30. In the victory. So a good start to the year. A good start already 
in terms of upgrade points as well. Parrish Wynn, of course, the safety that we picked up. Very intrigued to see just how good he is at 24 years old, though. I'm just so worried that I'm going to lose this team. I really am. I really, really am. That, that stress is going to be looming overhead all season long. And like I said, even though the comments mentioned, or you know, someone in the comments, and I'm sorry, I forget your name, but even though it mentioned, like, hey, well, technically you don't have to lose the team. You can technically switch to being a coach. It's like, man, even then, <laughs> even then, that lack of control is rough. And I don't believe, despite it being an online franchise with me being in control, that there's really anything I can do in terms of trying to uh, give this team an advantage. Toggle autopilot, raise morale to 50, add five. Ooh! What? I can do that? Yes, add five million to funds. Add five million to funds. Add five million to funds. Okay, we're fine. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. We're gonna be just fine. We're gonna be just fine. All I have to do is hit this button a ton. And, uh, you know, we're gonna be okay. I wish I could raise it to more than five million at a time. But, uh, you know, a new loan came in, and suddenly old Crobert Raft isn't, uh, isn't gonna be sleeping on the street corners anytime soon. That is tremendous. All right, what are we at now? Oh, we're 27 in the positive. Okay, well, now the good thing is, this series isn't in danger, and we can focus on winning the goddamn Super Bowl. Reggie Choice is out for seven weeks. Jesus. Really? But he's so good, he can't break his arm. He's a man of steel. Well, that sucks. I mean, and the good thing is we do have some depth there, but we'll see how it affects us heading into week two against the Colts. Week by week matchup, I don't really think I'm going to be all that concerned as we move to 2-0 and after beating the Colts. I don't think I'm going to be all that concerned. What I'm likely to do is just check the stats at the end of the season. As Kerry Young and Connor Wakefield both improve, Mr. Young, our starting center, is now up to an 83. Very good there for the 25-year-old out of Oregon State. And Connor Wakefield, let's actually make him better as a pass rusher. He goes up to a 74, hoping to continue to see him improve after we used a relatively high draft pick on him. Of course, I was hoping he'd be a little bit better out of the gates than he is. So, in terms of who we're scouting next year, right? Now, some people might not be happy with me cheating, but it's like, man, the alternative is if you like this series, guess what I had to or it was going to end. In terms of who we should be looking at, I still think it's kind of just genuinely everybody. I mean, we have a couple of younger receivers. We still have Harry for a little bit of time. The O-line is fine. I mean, Yoder's 21. There's really, I mean, maybe you know, another starting DT. Because Dudley Mayo is not that great. Although the linebackers that we have are great. I mean, Miles Jack is getting up there. But, I mean, we have Sparks, we have Wakefield, and we have Kirby. So I think DT and linebacker should probably be our main focus this season. Let me see if there's another defensive back scout. There is. So for now, uh, we will fire John Sonino. And we will bring in... Kevin Brooks. So we'll look at the D-line, and we'll look at the linebackers here first. Player progression is already maxed out. I mean, we're looking, we're looking damn good. Free agency-wise, I mean, I really haven't used that too much, but uh, we might as well. Let's go with D-line and linebacker, actually, just to play it safe. That makes sense. Just in case there's anybody in next year's free agent class that we might need. So let's take a look. Number one projected pick right now is Adam Isaac, apparently, out of Texas A&M, the quarterback. But obviously it's not who we're interested in. So on the D-line, Lynn Mays out of Alabama, looking pretty good. Unfortunately, well, the depth of this draft probably isn't that great. That is looking like it's the case. Yeah, this is this is unfortunate thus far. Very much unfortunate. Well, the good news is for me, I could look to replace Miles Jack, or now I could look to re-sign him. I mean, in terms of re-signing, there's really nobody that we have to worry about. 
You know, like, none of these guys are major concerns, which is good. The core, okay, I lied. <laughs> I was going to say the core of this team is locked up. Nope. Miles is still going to be good enough, though, that I think he'll be back next year. He wants a five-year deal at 29 years old. Are you insane? We will probably get to that Miles Jack contract later on in the year. For now... Let's go and sim this game against the 2-0 Jets, and they win it. So the Jets will be atop the division. They hand us our first loss of the year. The goddamn Jets continue to be an issue for us, as they have been over the past couple of seasons. Lionel Hill up to an 80. Ben Monroe is up to a 79. Very useful player for us in the secondary. At 24 years old, and then everybody else here is just kind of random roster filler, including Chester Graves, our backup quarterback. So we take on Buffalo after that very unfortunate loss against a team that I never like to see us lose to. Top talent on the left-hand side here is actually looking pretty good. What about on the right? How are we looking? The answer is not very good <laughs> not very good at all but that's okay so like i said contract renegotiations i'm just going to handle that towards the end of the year and that way too we get to see if miles starts to regress a little bit earlier so we're good to go let's sim this game against the two and one bills and we lose that as well back down to 500 losing two divisional games in a row and there could be trouble on the horizon for us. That is not good. At all. Down to 2-2, two and two, lose to the Jets, lose to the Bills. And this team is underperforming thus far. That is the only way to phrase it, in my opinion, as Solomon Crosby gets some good upgrades there. And he's up to a 77 Overall, we take on the Jets again, getting those two games against them out of the way very early on this season, as DeAndre Bryan is an absolute beast that we could look to pick up in this upcoming draft. Again, we do have two first-round picks, one of them projected to be quite high up there. I imagine, unfortunately, uh, that is our own at 2-2. Two and two this stage of the season with the starts that we've had. So let's see what we got here. Looking to hand the Jets their first loss of the year. It's the return game. It's the home side of this. Can we get a win? Please. Yes, we do. Thank God. So back to a winning record. We take on the Ravens next. Big upgrade points here as Chase Dawson makes it to an astounding 91 overall. It's absolutely crazy. He is the second best quarterback in the league and that much closer to unlocking that fifth ability at a 95, which would just be insane. And talk about Miles Jack regressing? Not quite. He's up to a 90. <laughs> Don't know how long he'll be there for. But that is insane. He unlocks Lurker to go alongside Tip Drill and, of course, Zone Hawk as an X Factor. Sammy Kirby is going to improve again as well. The 22-year-old will actually make him better as a power rusher. He still gets the overall boost as well, which is the best feeling in the world. So he is up to an 84 as a second-year pro. Insanity. Ricky Sparks will just make better at pass coverage because he'll never be a scheme fit. And he's up to an 84. So again, he was well on his way to making it to an 84 without the XP boosts. He is an insane player. Taylor Spencer at running back, make him better as an elusive option. He's up to an 80. As he gets an ability as well, that is Jukebox. So not too bad. Harvey Pemberton, who sounds like <laughs> like the typical, like, you know, Wall Street kind of typecast name. <laughs> ah, Harvey Pemberton. 34th rated wideout already. And Isaiah Collins, who we brought back this year. I'll make him better as a field general. As he goes up to a 73. So good improvement there early on. As we'll take a look at the weekly awards. It is Ben Monroe. Eight tackles and a pick. Last week. Very, very good. Negotiation-wise, of course, that is still going to wait. Although, 
You know, you see the amount of money we've made already? I can't help but think we actually would have ended up in the positives anyway. Better safe than sorry, for sure. But I can't help but think we would have been fine seeing how much money we've made already. It could have been really close, which would have been very scary. So, like I said, definitely better safe than sorry. But we might have been fine anyway. We're good to move over to a linebacker scout. And then again, from there, it doesn't really matter who or what we choose to scout out. Is there a linebacker scout, though? There is not. So we'll focus on DBs after that, but we're going to have to burn a lot of points on scouting linebackers without the discount, which is fine. Let's start on that left-hand side here. Rich Sandridge is the top option. That was a mistake in terms of burning points there, but that's okay. We have more points right now than I really know what to do with. So we take on the 2-2 two and two Ravens. We have a massive overall edge, although Lamar is still there as an X-Factor, which is not surprising. Let's see what we can do. Can we stay above 500? No, we cannot. We do get a breakout moment, which is great, but we fall 35-30 to Baltimore, and we're 3-3 three and three on the year. That is incredibly disappointing. The Bills aren't exactly running away with it. You know, it's certainly not out of reach to rebound, but we're slipping up more than we should. And it makes me wonder why exactly, especially when the starters on this team are still pretty much just as good. Like I said, a slight hit to the O-line, but for the most part, we're fine. As... I don't know who you are. I mean, you're a receiver. It's Harvey Pemberton. 150 yards or three touchdowns for Pemberton, and he's going to improve. He is already... We don't even know. We don't even know what he is, and he already just had a breakout moment. That's insane. Well, we're going to jump into this before I forget. We're down in Miami taking on the 1-4 and four Dolphins. They have Jerome Baker, who went X-Factor, which sounds about right. He typically turns into a pretty damn good player in this game. We're just going to make sure that Pemberton gets the yardage. I'm going to try not to affect the game too much from there. Oh, hey, remember when we beat the Colts in the playoffs and then absolutely choked in the Super Bowl? That's what that picture's from. I mean, Chase Dawson, 17-4... Can't exactly blame him, it's just, it's got to be the defense then. Which, I mean, we are running with that 3-4 defense over the 4-3. You would think with the linebackers that we have, we'd be capable of doing it. You know, just perhaps the injury to, Rich, uh, to Ricky Sparks is that damaging. There's a chance that's the case, as we have a 7-3 lead early on. Make it 14-3. I want to see how that went down as it was an 80-yard touchdown pass to Solomon Crosby. And on our follow-up drive, a couple of big completions, a 14-yard throw to Nikhil Harry. Cap that one off. Let's sim to the half. It's now 14-10, make it 21-10. The offense still not really having any issues, which doesn't surprise me. We do get the ball here to start this half. Where aware is Mr. Pemberton. In terms of his breakout, he does not have a single reception today. Did you injure him? Like douche? You didn't. He just, okay. Well, I'm making sure we get this, damn it. I was almost tempted to say, like, screw it, whatever. If I get a moment like that, I'm just going to say, cool, we get it. But people wouldn't be cool with that, so whatever. I'll earn it. I will earn it. I'll do it. Let's earn this bad boy and get Pemberton some upgrades. I like what you're selling here. You know what? I'm going to send Pemberton deep. We're going to see just how much speed our boy has. No, we're not. He's not open. You are, though. Taylor Spencer. Very good. Taylor Spencer at the back. So, I mean, Dawson, prior to that throw, was having a really good game for us. It's not surprising. Emberton's out on the right. Man coverage. Well, I don't really like it. I don't really like it. I'm gonna be honest. I want to get him the yardage. Certain. Oh my God. Well, you know, I. Uh, oh my God. 
Well, let's try to get him a touchdown instead now that Taylor Spencer's gotten us to the one yard line. Holy shit. What a fucking play that was. Uh, I don't want the read option. Inverted Veer. Shotgun play reads defense. Nah, no, we want the RPO. The question is it's not Pemberton that they've set up. <sighs> I'm just going to score the touchdown, whatever. <laughs> I can't help it. Oliver Sheffield gets it. As we rip that Miami defense to shreds. And we'll see what happens on our next offensive drive. That was not the intent that I had. But it's like, okay, I can sit there and force the ball to Pemberton the entire time or just take what the hell they're giving me. Yes, here we go. Pemberton probably going to get the ball here. We'll just air it out to him. See what we can get. Harvey Pems. Oh, yeah! Let's go! What a throw from Dawson. What a catch from Pemberton. Oh, Randy Moss reincarnate. What a throw. Changed it to a change it to a rat catch last second. Oh my god. Well, that's one touchdown. Whew. Oh, Pemberton. Had a feeling we should just go for it. Oh, we went for it. As uh I don't really like that you're showing blitz here. I don't really like it. Oh! Oh my god, Chase Dawson's unreal. I can't believe he just made that throw. If he's not as high as highly rated as he did, that's not a completion. Not even close. We already have over 400 yards of offense on the Dolphins today. Pemberton's out on the right. I don't really know how I feel about going for it, but this could work to get him on the slant. It's not going to work. You walked right into that. That's okay. Hubbard with the sack. Only lost four, though. It's not too bad. You gotta love celebrating when you're down 35 to 10, though. No Pemberton. Spears is actually in over Pemberton. Okay, no, let's just go for it. I don't mind trying to air it out with Dawson. I don't mind. That's gonna be picked. Oh my god, the fucking catch! Oh, Nikhil Harry. This quarterback is a cheat code. He is a goddamn cheat code. Harvey Pemberton is the primary target. We're gonna see if we can go for touchdowns over yardage. This would be his second of the game. He's covered. He's covered. Oh, if that wasn't, if that wasn't an X factor, I think that was. An, it was an ability. That wasn't an ability on that corner. I think we're golden there. Oh, you know what? Let's still see if we can get Pemberton here. Nope, we can't. He's not open. He's not open. Go Dawson. Slide Dawson. Here we go. I'd rather take that quick pickup of three and have another chance to throw it than outright throw the touchdown. Pemberton's out. And we're going to look for him over the middle. No, we're not. We're going to look for him back out to the left. Come on, Harvey. Get open. You're not really open. I'll take the completion for yardage, but it's only a pickup of two. So we're going to go for it to try and get this, obviously. And uh, we're just going to send Pemberton over the middle to have Baldwin block. So have Spencer block. Have Spears on that route, and that should get him open. Bam! Picture perfect throw. Dawson is broken. He is absolutely broken. Harvey Pemberton gets a second touchdown today. He needs one more as we are whooping the Miami Dolphins. Good God. No Pemberton out here on this RPO. Oh, baby, let's go, Nikhil. I'll take that. Big first down. Decent. Like I said, I don't got to worry about airing it out. I just got to get down to the red zone. Now, 2,000 passing yards today. Or not today, but on the season. It feels like today with how we've just been murdering the Dolphins. Uh, it's definitely setting us up in a lot of... Uh, definitely a conservative play call set here, but that's fine. Like I said, I don't mind marching down the field. Dude, oh my god. The explosiveness of Taylor Spencer to change direction like that. He's not even that highly rated of a running back. Yeah, I, I definitely love this team. Uh, I don't feel cool about play action there. I want a quick throw. Have Crosby out on the right. Let's see what we got. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I was hoping as Baldwin gets hurt, that sucks. 
I was hoping to get the block there upfield. I did. I just couldn't shake that guy. No Pemberton again. Let's go for the relatively quick throw. Sheffield. Wow, Dawson. Accurate throw. I uh, I don't believe you. That wasn't very accurate, game. Bruce Sternum for Baldwin. We're going to go for it. No reason not to. Uh, let's go ahead and be cheap about it. Go with a somewhat broken play. Now, Pemberton's out there. Keep an eye on him, but Nikhil Harry is definitely the target. That was a horrible throw. That should have been picked. That should have been picked. All right, so we turn it over on four. That was an awful throw. I just kind of made up my mind. I was throwing it to Nikhil Harry, and uh, that was not the way to go. So the Dolphins do put points on the board. Again, I just that's all I need, it's points on the board. Uh, I can't snap out of goal line formation, so this is going to suck. You know what? Fuck it. Let's try it. Uh, I don't like this. Come back. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me with that work. This game sucks. <laughs> oh my god, how did that work? A rifle throw to Evans Jr. Woo. Oh man, that was so dumb. And Pemberton's out on the right. Let's see what we can do. Can we hit Pemberton outright? For that touchdown! He got to the one! Oh my god. He's coming down with everything, man. Dawson's insane. We gotta go for the receiver screen for Pemberton here. This is it. We should be able to get him. Oh, there. Yep, there's that typical Madden blocking. We can make that throw on the run. That's fine. And then yeah, there's, your, there's your typical Madden blocking for you. Jesus, gotta love it. Uh, what are we looking for here? What are we looking for? I'm gonna corner up. Pemberton's still out on the right? He is. I want him over the middle. And uh, we're gonna send Crosby back out that way. Come on, Harvey. Get open. Get open. Let's go. There it is. Challenge complete. Harvey Pemberton. We don't even know how good he is. And he's about to get even better. A three touchdown game. He's up to five touchdowns already in his rookie season, I'm pretty sure, pretty confident, yeah, we were going to walk away with the victory here in Miami. Anyway, uh, I certainly helped, except for, you know, that one, there were two throws there, it's like, yeah, that should have been picked, but that's Madden for you, I'll take it. We get a big win, we stay above 500, how Nikhil Harry came down with that ball, I have no goddamn idea, but Pemberton has himself the game that he needed and he gets that upgrade. Six touchdown passes, nearly 500 yards for Dawson. It was that first touchdown throw to Pemberton, though, that was just mwah, big chef's kiss to that for sure. As Clinton Tuck improves again, he is going to go up to an 87. I meant to boost up his best attribute, and it lagged, but that's okay. Eduardo Roman on the O-line up to an 84. Very, very good. And we have Draymond Jones, who I'm not worried about, but Luke Homan, our kicker. He's actually a punter converted to a kicker. Uh, let's make him better in an accurate sense. He's up to a very nice overall. Indeed, plus two awareness for the 21-year-old rookie. You can see why I picked him up off the free agent list. He should be able to develop, I would hope. So what is the end result for Mr. Pemberton? Superstar. So he was star. He's now superstar in his rookie season. He is going to be a monster and absolutely going to be the Nikhil Harry uh, replacement, although again, Harry doesn't even have to be replaced yet. So a very, very fortunate situation. The fucking menu lag, my god. Very, very fortunate situation for us currently. I cannot complain. So that will do it for the scouting. We have our bye week coming up anyway. We'll probably end this episode uh, before we play the Dolphins on the other end of that bye week. Uh, again, just kind of weird how quickly we're playing. Everybody has Pemberton. will make it up to a 79 overall, which is just tremendous. Again, he's 22. He's a superstar already. He's fast as hell. I love this guy already. Miles McBath, he makes it to the green territory. 76 overall for him. And Quentin Gordon 
makes it to a very nice overall as well. One of the guys that we picked up in the draft, wide receiver-wise, that just wasn't all that good. Weekly award-wise, of course, it's going to be Dawson. How would it not be Dawson? And scouting-wise, we might as well take care of it. Let's get the next week before we play Miami. So the good thing is, fundage-wise, I literally just found out I can give myself funds, so we don't have to worry about that again, which is pretty nice. Because, again, uh, the justification, and someone mentioned it in the comments, too, it's like, man, it's not like Robert Kraft would be like, nope, I'm bankrupt and have to sell the team now. Any owner in the NFL is going to be able to be like, yeah, sure, fuck it, here's your money, whatever, and it's fine. So, screw you, Robert Kraft will not be forced out due to fake financial issues if a fucking rub and tug isn't enough to get rid of him. <laughs> Reggie Choice is back from injury. We are up to 4-3 and three on the season, likely to kick the shit out of the Dolphins again next week, I would hope. Again, despite it not being as good of a start to the season as it should be, we are still on track to have a very successful season, as you would expect. The Bills at 5-2 and two aren't that much further ahead, so things are looking pretty good. There's only one undefeated team, as it is, so... Am I, you know, am I nervous? Am I am I worried about the rest of the season thus far? Not really. Although it is clear that our defense is uh, a bit of an issue, which makes me wonder in terms of the scheme fits. I mean, we've stuck with the New England playbooks through thick and thin, but if we look here, we're on vertical power run, which is a 72. By far the highest. Next closest is vertical zone run at a 63. And then 3-4 unders at an 84. Base 3-4 is at a 73. We have a 78 on the 4-6, which I never like running. So, I mean, the 3-4 under seems like the best way to go in terms of XP, but could that be the reason behind our defensive struggles? Not sure. We're going to call it there. Hopefully in the next episode we are able to sim the rest of the season. But having to jump into that Nikhil, or not the Nikhil Harry moment, the Harvey Pemberton moments, uh, you know, I took up a little bit of time. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Or again, hopefully better results. And then the episode after that should be playoff time again. <laughs>